For pre-medical students, the MCAT is arguably the most daunting and for some just straight demoralizing part of the process of becoming a medical student. You go through four years taking some of the hardest classes in undergrad, and any free time you have left, you spend pursuing various extracurriculars and getting medical exposure. And after having an incredible four years of working extremely hard and experiencing tons of success in the various things that you do, a single bad day can prevent you from getting into medical school. Now, as bad as that sounds, and I do get it, that's literally about as bad as it gets, there is a silver lining. The MCAT is one of the most powerful tools that you can use to either overcome potential red flags on your application or just put the cherry on top of an already stellar application. So in this video, we're going to be talking about all the things that you can do to make MCAT day one of the best days of your pre-med experience, or at least not a demoralizing one. And I even have a special guest who was able to score in the 99th percentile on the MCAT who's willing to share all of the strategies and tips and tricks that he used to absolutely crush this exam. So let's get straight into it. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith and I'm a medical student at the Mayo Clinic. So let's first just talk about what the MCAT is. MCAT stands for Medical College Admissions Test. It's a computer-based exam that pre-medical students take who are planning on going to medical school in the US, Canada, Australia, or Caribbean islands. Its goal is to test you on everything you learn during your pre-med courses, and it's broken down into four sections. The AAMC provides a detailed description of each one of the sections, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but I'll give a brief overview here. So the entire exam is 230 questions, and you're given six hours and 15 minutes to complete it. And I don't know about you, but staying focused on an exam for six hours is a pretty daunting task. Just to compare this to other standardized exams, the ACT is two hours and 55 minutes, the SAT is three hours, the GMAT is three hours and seven minutes, the LSAT is three hours and 30 minutes, the GRE is three hours and 45 minutes, and the DAT is four hours and 15 minutes. Now this isn't a video saying that one test is harder than another, but compared to these tests, the MCAT is about twice as long and twice as hard. But in all seriousness, the MCAT is just as much about content as it is about just learning how to take this beast of an exam. So the exam is broken down into four sections. The first section of the exam is the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, which is 59 questions and with the following breakdown. 25% is basic biochemistry, 5% introductory biology, 30% general chemistry, 15% organic chemistry, 25% introductory physics. The second section is the cars portion, which is 53 questions broken up into nine passages with five to seven questions in each passage. The third section is the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems portion with the following breakdown. 25% basic biochemistry, 65% introductory biology, 5% general chemistry, 5% organic chemistry. And finally, the last section is the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior section with the following breakdown. 65% introductory psychology, 30% introductory sociology, and 5% introductory biology. So if you're currently taking these courses, especially the ones that make up a pretty big chunk of this exam, it's just that much more motivation to learn it as best you can now so you don't have to worry too much about relearning it later. So now that we know what the MCAT is and all the things that's on this beast of an exam, how would we actually need to do in order to get to medical school? Of course, this will be different for everyone depending on the other aspects of your application and the types of schools that you want to go to, but we can look at some data provided by the AAMC to give us a good idea. In the 2021-2022 application cycle, the mean MCAT score for students who got accepted to medical school was a 511.8. If we round that up to 512, we can see that that score correlates to around the 84th percentile. Now that can be extremely discouraging to hear. You essentially have to be in the top 15% to have the average score of the accepted medical school applicant. That's crazy. But of course, that is not the whole story. If we look at the standard deviation from the mean MCAT score, which was 6.6, .6, we know that 34% of students who successfully got into medical school scored between 505 and 512. So if you have a score in that range, or you've been taking practice tests within that range, know that around a third of the students who successfully got into medical school were right where you're at. And ultimately, the purpose of the MCAT from the medical school's perspective is just to give them a little bit of trust in you that you can handle the academic rigors of medical school. And this brings up an important point. For students who have a few quote unquote red flags on their academic resume, like a few C's or a GPA that's a little lower than you'd hope for, the MCAT is an amazing opportunity for you to show medical schools what you're capable of. Now, what happens if you don't get the score on the MCAT that you want? Is it bad if you have to take it multiple times? The short answer is no. And the, the proof of the short answer is, I took it multiple times and it worked out. 
But if you need more proof, according to the AAMC, 38% of students who took the MCAT in 2018, 2019, and 2020 were retesters. So clearly it is not abnormal to take this exam multiple times. That being said, if you do choose to take the exam again, make sure that your score is going in the right direction. Because although it may not be inherently bad to take the MCAT multiple times, it's definitely not gonna be the best look if you retake it and your score gets worse. So how do we actually prepare and study for this exam to essentially guarantee success? Well, I definitely have a few thoughts of my own, but I thought it'd probably be better if I reach out to someone who, let's say, scored in the 99th percentile and get a little bit of insight from them. This is my classmate Nathan, a medical student at the Mayo Clinic, a future plastic surgeon, and clearly one of the best test takers on the planet, explaining how he went about preparing for the MCAT. Because I know that you absolutely dominated the MCAT in 99th percentile. What did you get on the MCAT? 522. Okay, see? Yeah. And immediately, I feel inferior in every <laughs> way. Um. <laughs> the way that I thought of it was, I'm gonna be taking three months. I better be putting my all into this exam if this is really what I wanna do. And so I treated it like a job. You know, some people, I mean, it depends on your shift and stuff. Um, but for me, I was really like a, a 6 a.m. until about 3 to 4 p.m. sort of studier. And I was like, this is my absolute regimen for the next three months and we'll make that happen. Um, so I started, I used the Kaplan books. Uh, I thought they were great. Um, my opinion on them kind of fluctuates as I talk to people now. I thought it was, I just did a one, um, a one over of those books and then kind of tossed them away. Just a, a good way to refresh my knowledge on a lot of things, see if there's anything I didn't know. So I could um, kind of underscore that when I was doing practice tests. But that was the biggest thing was the transition into practice test. So the last month and a half, I did the um, AMCAS or AAMC practice test and also next step practice test. And I would do one every other day. And then I would review the uh, on the off days as well. The biggest area for me that was a difficulty was cars. Uh, I started, I wrote my first practice test. I was like, this isn't, they saved that bad. Like, I think I could do it. And then I think I scored like probably 40th percentile. And I was like, shoot, like, and I remember like actually like crying and be like, this is going to stop me from being a doctor. Like I, I won't be able to do this. Um, and I was like, maybe it's a fluke. You know, that's what my family said. And so I kept writing them every other day and I kept around the 40th, 50th, 60th percentile. And I was, I was struggling. Um, and so I really had to focus on cars the most, I would say out of all of the subjects. And for me, practice was the biggest thing. So like I said, um, I did all those practice tests, which I think is huge. But then also for cars, I did a practice test every day from the first for the full three months, every other day. So I would um, I would try and break up my studying throughout the day into like I would study chem phys first. I would study biosec or cars and then I would do bio and psych so that my mind was constantly in the same flow as what it would be on kind of game day, I guess. Uh, and so I would I used uh, both. I think it was exam crackers, 101 passages. I used uh, next step um, passages as well. And I would just do a full length. And by the end, I was just doing the practice tests, but they were really good. Pieces of advice uh, that I would say about studying, though, is, like I said, treating it like a job, but also um, it's not just like a mental thing of like, oh, I'm going to sit down and write this exam for like seven, eight hours, whatever it is. Uh, it's like you really got to treat your whole body really well during that three months. So, you know, I was in bed at like seven, I would wake up at four, I worked out for an hour, I ate the same meals every single day that I was going to eat on the day of the exam, I made sure that like all my macros were counted for and stuff. Um, and I try to eat like really a brain healthy food. I mean, I don't know if that's a, a real thing. But um, like just like a lots of like fruits and veggies, a lots of nuts, like salmon and stuff like that. Um, and I think that probably made more of a difference than me actually studying the content it was just like feeling good uh, in myself. So I was so encouraged to take the weekend off, so two days. I never took more than a day off just because I, for some reason, had just like an unquenchable thirst for like trying to kill this exam where I was like, I, if I take a day off and I blow it, I'm going to blame that day sort of thing, which was totally not healthy. Um, 
but I would say like. So you have to be toxic to get in the 99th percentile. <laughs> not, okay, not okay. by any chance. I know some people who are just, I don't know. Uh, I just really had to grind for it. Um, I would say the big thing is like even throughout the course of the day, like prioritizing breaks in general is like really big. And so on the the day of the exam, it's like every two hours or so you get a break, I think. Um, and so that's what I would do. And I would do 10 minute breaks, just like I have on the exam. Uh, and like I said, I would eat the exact amount of food that I would eat during the exam during my breaks. And every single day, every two hours or so, I would take 10 minutes. And that would be kind of like my just zone out moment. Um, and then when I left uh, studying for the day, I tried to shut it off as best I could. Um, just because again, if you're thinking about it all the time, you're gonna get fatigued unless you just have, I don't know, an insane sort of concentration capacity, but I don't, I didn't have that. Uh, and then, yeah, Sundays usually, um, I would go to church in the morning, but then I'd try and like hang out with some friends and stuff in the afternoon just to get my mind off of it. Of course, all they wanna talk about is the MCAT uh, when that's what you're going through. So um, I think it's good to try and prioritize things outside of the MCAT for at least once a day, one, one day a week. But yeah, so I would say when I really started those practice tests, I was about a 55, uh, 55 to 65 um, for percentile. And then I say I would steadily, I steadily increased maybe five percentile a week until the final week when I would, I would say scoring consistently like 90 to 95th percentile. Um, and that's when I knew I like, I felt really confident. I said, honestly, if I score even close to this, I would be more than happy. Um, and then I was just really fortunate on the day of that it worked out. Uh, and if I noticed that there was a repetition, I didn't know something, I would write it down uh, in a notebook. And I probably filled up maybe like, maybe 15 pages or so of just like one liners of things that I didn't know. And every night before I go to bed, I would read those, uh, read the pages. So every day would add on a little bit more, but I'd be reviewing those topics that I really wasn't understanding. Got you. So the thing that you weren't understanding, it was like almost making old school Anki cards yeah. of like writing something down and then reviewing it later. Exactly. Um, which actually brings me to a point. Did you? Okay. So you use Anki now. Religiously. I know for medical yes, school. Sir. Religiously. Yeah. And you use the Anki. Mm -hmm. Or did you know of the Anki that Anki just dropped an MCAT I did deck. not know that, but I would be all over that. So you would recommend basically what I'm hearing is the Yang King MCAT deck. Absolutely. You know, like, like I said, if the exam is like about seven, eight hours and you're still, I, like I said, trying to study for like nine, 10 hours, if two to three of those hours were just extra review using Anki, absolutely. I think I would have done much better on the exam, like knowing how I study now and like how efficient Anki is, there is no way, there is no way that I would be reading those captain <laughs> books as thorough as I did if I had Anki available. Um, and then I'll also leave um, uh, leave with one last note is, it's really about resilience. Uh, the exam itself, you know, pretty much, I, I strongly believe pretty much anyone in the world is smart enough to learn this knowledge and write a good exam. It's a lot about figuring out how to take such a long exam, how to feel resilient when you get a couple passages where you really struggle and you're like, I feel like I'm tanking it right now. How can you bounce back from that? And it's really a lot of mental fortitude of when you're studying, being able to study through those good moments and those bad moments and being okay with not feeling okay sometimes. And it's a, like I said, it's a mental and emotional journey and whatever gets you to that success is okay. So don't feel that anyone has to kind of follow some sort of rigid platform. Now that was some straight wisdom right there. And we hinted at something that I highly, highly, highly recommend for anyone preparing for the MCAT and something that I wish was around when I was studying for the MCAT and it's today's sponsor, Traverse. Traverse is a resource where you can organize your notes into absolutely beautiful mind maps and then study those notes using evidence-based study strategies like flashcards to really make sure that you're remembering everything that you're learning. And the real, real kicker here is that they have the Onking MCAT deck already programmed into the resource. So this is the Traverse dashboard and you can see here we have Onking MCAT. So if I click there, 
you'll see I'm presented with kind of a split screen. On the left side of the screen has all of the notes, all of the notes that you can take, all of the notes that you actually need for the MCAT in general. As well as on the right, you see we have this kind of beautifully laid out mind map to keep everything organized. And what's really, really awesome about this is that as we can go through, let's click on biochemistry, for example. We're going to see it's continued to be, be broken down into separate sections. And the high yield sections, the things that come up the most often on the MCAT, like what we talked about, are already highlighted for you in blue. So those are things it's telling you, let's make sure that we're focusing on these kind of things. So we can go into lab techniques, and then you see here in my notes section, these are things that are already programmed in. So you can continue to kind of learn about different techniques. And then as you're going through and you're learning this material, you can practice using your flashcards by just clicking review flashcards. And you can see here, it's just like the Anki app, but it's within this one uniform resource that also has all of your notes. So I wanna go back to our mind map and our notes to show you something that's just absolutely incredible and really just blows my mind. And again, I'm upset that I didn't have this when I was studying for the MCAT. If we go down, let's say that we're studying psych, soch, and we're doing biology and behavior, and we want to study the brain, we can see there it's high yield, it has a blue there. So we're gonna make sure we study the brain. When we click there, you'll see that what pulls up in our notes section is just a list of Khan Academy videos already plugged in to your notes section. So all you have to do is just as you're working through your mind map and you're going through different topics that you're studying, you have the main resources to study those already plugged into the Traverse system. So you can watch your videos, you can watch structure of the nervous system and then review those flashcards and continuing to review those flashcards and working through this mind map essentially makes studying more streamlined than it's ever been, which is incredibly helpful helpful, especially when you're studying for a beast of an exam like the MCAT. So if I could sum up the main things to do in order to really, really succeed on the MCAT, one would be treating studying for the MCAT like a job. Two would be planning your study schedule in a way that transitions from content review to beginning to do more and more practice questions and full length practice exams. Three would be, even though this is an important test, don't forget to take care of yourself. And lastly, four, use Traverse and that Onking MCAT deck. I'm sure it's gonna save you a whole ton of time and your scores are gonna skyrocket. Again, I am actually very, very salty that I didn't have this around when I was studying for the MCAT. But that's all that I have for this video. I hope that you liked it and found it helpful as you're studying for the MCAT. If you did enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are studying for the MCAT and need a little bit of motivation, check out this video where I walk you through one of the best days I've ever had in medical school. And hopefully it'll be a little inspiring and motivating for you as you'll be able to have some of these days just like this once you get over that hurdle of the MCAT. So with that, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one.